Support companies that help support the Stony Ridge Farm. Subscribe to the channel and contact Farm Fence Solutions for all of your fence building and tornado wire needs. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We've got a project. So you see, I've got the uh, TYM T574 tractor right here with some fence posts on here. I also have a gigantic apparatus <laughs> on the front of little peanut right here. This is a Gale RT210 uh, skid loader. And what we're gonna be doing today is driving post with this Protec P240 post driver. We've got four posts that we have to drive and we're driving them all around our intensive grazing setup around this waterer, okay? So you can see I've got the pasture split into four paddocks. One, two, three, and we're standing in number four. What I had to do is work out in my head the best way to position permanent post in place here so that the cows will have access to drink. So come along today and we're gonna show you, I don't know where this information is anywhere on the internet, guys. So come along today, we're gonna show you exactly how I set this up where the cows can access this whole area around the water tank with ease without crowding them and by making this super efficient. So in other words, when I go to move the cows, all I have to do is unhook one little uh, gate connector and hook up another one. Very, very simple, very fun. And we're gonna pound some post in and get to work with these pieces of equipment. Awesome. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. So before we start working with the equipment, we've got to get the cows moved up to the next paddock. So we're going to get the cows out of the pasture that we're in right now so they don't bother us and they don't get hurt with the equipment. We're going to move them up behind the house. So a little cattle drive before we get started working. You girls ready to move? Woo! You ready? Woo! You ready to move? <laughs> All right, guys, what we got to do is take the cows, open this gate right here, and we'll run them up through this alleyway into the next pasture. It's about well, 150 yards to the next pasture, and I have the fences up right here. These are the poly wire fences, and that is a geared reel from Strain Right. All the fencing material and stuff that we're using today on the farm comes from Farm Fence Solutions. There'll be a link down the video description for you. You girls ready? You ready to move? How about you, butthead? You ready? Woo! Woo! Yes, girls. Look out. Can't get through when the gate's touching you. Everybody move. All right. <laughs> Let's get these girls up here. They'll follow me like kittens. It's pretty cool. Come on, girls. Come on. Woo. Come on. Guys, this is called low stress animal handling. We don't whistle, we don't whip, we don't yip, we don't spank them, we don't <laughs> yell, we just walk and the girls will follow. going right into that paddock right there. Go ahead, girls. Good girls. Very good. Good girls. Go ahead, girls. There you go. All these calves were born on the farm this year. Go ahead, girls. Go ahead. A funny thing that a lot of people don't know, if you walk the opposite way that your livestock is walking, it, it makes them want to go that way. It's pretty cool. I don't know why, but it works. Watch, as I walk this way, they all go by that way. Then I'll come in behind them, and I'll just give a little bit of pressure to get them up to this new pasture. Lots of good grass in here, guys. What a testimony to how being kind to your animals can really help them to be so much easier to handle. This isn't the old wild west, guys. This is gentle animal handling, 
and cows living the way they're supposed to live. Let's get busy working around the water tank. So let's define the problem that we have right here. Every time I move the cows, I have to move the fence. In other words, I have to take either this post or this post out. The cows will have access to this section right here, but they don't have access in there or in there or in here. In other words, every time I move the cows, I end up having to pull a post and open up to the next paddock so that they can get their water, all right? What I'm trying to do is put in some permanent infrastructure here, and I did a lot of brainstorming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put posts in. I'm gonna put these steel posts that are sitting back here, and these are two inch SS40 from Farm Fence Solutions. They are, I do believe, eight feet tall, and we're gonna knock them on into the ground pretty far. Basically, they only have to be the height of this step-in post in order to support what we're going to do here. And we want them fairly low, but we also don't want them too low where the cows will get injured. So we're going to put one post here, one post there, one post there, and one post over there. Now, the math that I came up with in my head was 15 feet out from the center of the waterer. And this is a Mirafount 3390 waterer. We'll go over there and I'll show you how that works. So 15 feet out from the center of the water will be post number one. That will connect to this wire. Post number two is gonna be 15 feet on the other side. 15 feet and 15 feet. What that makes is a 30 foot square area for the cows to get in. Now in between those posts, we're gonna put some handles in and we're gonna put some little gates, okay? So I can access this without having to shock myself, okay? In other words, the wire will be tied up to this metal hook right here. Everything will remain on for the electric fence and I won't have to turn off the electric fence, come out, unhook right there, move the cows over, then come back down to the waterer and readjust the fence at the waterer. So this is gonna eliminate uh, some time consuming cattle moves for me twice a day. So it's gonna save me 20 minutes a day of walking and moving these cows. I can just unhook it right here and move them right next to the waterer, which is where they wanna be anyway. They're always hanging out near the waterer. So for, without further ado, we're gonna fire up uh, the P240 from Protec, Protec Machinery and we're gonna get busy driving some post. But before we drive post, I wanted to show you how the Mirafount waterer works. So under the ground, there is a pipe that feeds this. It's an inch and a quarter poly pipe. It goes down to three quarter inch and it comes up into this uh, container right here. Inside here is a float valve and there's water in this container. If you press down on this ball, the cows are able to access the water. So they take their nose, they press down on there, they access water. This is to keep mosquito larvae and trash out of our water tank right here. And it's also to keep it from freezing. So this is a frost proof waterer, okay? So this ball serves as an insulator also. And this thing is very thick and it has foam insulation all around it. There's a heat tube that goes down into that concrete pad and provides warmth to keep this from freezing. So we never have to worry about a water tank freezing. That's a Mirafount 3390. I'll post a link to that too. So this is the Protec P240 post driver. It's a hydraulically driven post driver. I'm sitting in the operator station here in the RT210. We'll turn the key on. Wait till the beep goes off. All those lights go off and start it up. Okay, got her fired up. We'll go ahead and bring our RPMs up yeah, to about 1800, I do believe. Yep, we're at 1540 now. There we go. We'll engage our hydraulic system right here. Now we got our hydraulics engaged. We're gonna hop out of this machine and we'll get everything all lined up for the post driver. We got two feet on the post driver that have to come down in the back and one foot that comes down right here in the front. I'll show you how it all works. So we're over here, we'll go ahead and we're gonna bring our rear leg down. That's that handle right there. All right, that helps to stabilize the machine. We also have two other legs, one there and one there. They're stabilized there. Now we're ready to rock and roll and we can start driving. The way this works is this big old heavy weight right here drops down onto the top of the post once we get the post all aligned. Pretty simple stuff, just got a lot of controls, hand and foot controls. This thing will rotate wherever you need it. This extends to wherever you need it. So if we need to put a post here, it'll go there. If you need to put a post there, it'll do that. Or on the other side also. 
So guys, there are a million different types of post drivers out there on the market. This is the Protec P240. Uh, it can be rented or it can be bought. And what we have here is a stick. This stick has marks on it. This was where I built my wood fence that you see at the bottom of the hill. And this is where the water gates are gonna be. So when I drive my post, which is right here, we'll get my post underneath this. This is called the mast. We have the mast almost leveled up and we also brought a level over here too. So we want our post to be plumb, all right? Is it level or plumb? Guys, let me know. We're gonna drive it down again to that mark right there. The way this works, we'll just go ahead and raise it up for you. We'll raise up our weight with this handle. You'll see the weight go by. just like that okay so we'll position our post where we want it right here basically I put uh, stakes in the ground right where I wanted my post I'll toss that out of the way put this right in there raise it up just a little more okay come on down with it I'm gonna give it a whack right there post is set now there's a little hook that I have to catch up here and I've got a little hook put on this. So I'll reach up, take my hook off my mast right there and we'll use this gigantic weight right here to drive in the post. It should be very, very simple. After we hit it one more time, we'll get on the level and we can move this around with the slew arm with the hydraulics and we don't have to touch anything else, guys. So we'll drive it down again to that mark. So let's get busy, we'll show you what to do. Checking level or plum. Let's go ahead and give it a good whack right there. I advise use uh, hearing protection. I'm only going to drive in four posts here. You got to think about this. We need to be level on two planes. This plane and that plane. Not all the way around the post. Two planes. This way and that way. If it is level or plumb that way, then it'll be plumb in the ground. So we're good this way, but we need to adjust a little bit this way. And that's it, it's level. Let's knock this dude into the ground, man. Super, super simple. With my marking post right here, I'm just gonna start driving. my rope back on, lift it off the post, and we are good to go. So that's one post down. We've just got to repeat this step four times. It's driven in the ground, and that dude is stout, man. The reason we drove it this low is so that it holds the ground very good in case cows get up against it. Cows will tear stuff up, that's for sure. So let's get you guys a time lapse. We've got three more to put in the ground, and then we'll show you all the cool stuff that we're gonna to mount to this post to make life super easy for us. guys you can tell what I'm doing here I'm just knocking the post in the ground this P240 post driver from Protec Machinery is super easy to use your great-grandma could get out here and use this thing super fun uh, the only thing I would say is that if you had a helper it would really make this job much much easier so maybe next time when we start building fence we have ourselves a good farm helper out here but this is what it takes guys sometimes you just can't find the help and it's hard to find help nowadays in the current economy we live in Guys, pound that like button as you're watching me get this done. This is a fun little job. 
just something that uh, most folks have been asking for and I think it's something we can all learn from as we uh, live life vicariously through my farm or as you build your own farm, your dream. Let's build your dream, guys. I encourage it. So we've got our four posts driven in the ground. We've got a few things from Strain Right right here. This is a termination end gate. We'll open this up and show you guys what we have. Um, this is gonna be where we attach to our post in some cases, okay? This is what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be attaching our fence to these that are gonna be attached to the pole. This will go out uh, on the line and this is what will work around our perimeter. So we're gonna go ahead and wire all this stuff up. I've got a roll of this stuff right here. And this is called, this is a double handled gate right here and I could easily just adjust this double handled gate. It's already pre-made. Again, all this stuff is from strain, right? But we're using electrified bungee cord and it's UV resistant, should last 15, 20 years. So this should be the last time we have to fool with this for quite some time. We'll show you how these mount up to the post and we'll show you how this connects to our wire, our current poly wire that's already there and the wire we're gonna be using for our gates. We're just basically making four bungee gates right here. And you can see we've got a good square area right here and that'll allow the cows to drink from here, here, here. And even if I split this into more paddocks, I can still connect up to this right here with as many of these as I want to. Really cool. So I want these round about the same height as my step-in post right here. So we're just gonna jab a step-in post right there, match it up, just that simple. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use some self-tapping screws to place this inside the post. Very, very simple, very easy, very economical. This insulates the electricity from the post. Okay. There we go. So this will be electrified and this will not. That's how you install them. We got three more to put in. So it hadn't rained in a couple days here on the Stony Ridge farm. <laughs> Whenever I get out here, get busy doing something, it decides it's gonna rain. So what we got here, and uh, this is the uh, uh, poly bungee, okay? Poly bungee from Strain Right. At least that's what I'm gonna call it. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's a bungee electrified bungee wire. So inside this bungee wire are little electric um, conductors right there. So I've got a handle right here and you saw I just cut that. I've got a handle. This is the strain right handle. The way this handle works, we'll lay this down. You pull out the little hook right here. We'll bring this through. A pair of needle nose would have been super handy to have, but I can grab it right here, pull that through. Okay, and then I'm gonna loop it and go right back in. Press it back down into its original position. Arr, just like so. Oh, if you guys have any other ideas, you let me know. This is the way I see it happening. Okay, I'll pull enough slack out of this to tie it off. So we'll go back here, pull that knot really, really tight. Now we're all connected up and we'll trim off this end piece right here, but then we'll hook right here and we're good to go. That's a gate, all right? We got one more to do, and then we'll show you guys how all this works, hopefully before it rains. <laughs> oh man. Where I'm connecting up to my post, this is a push-through connector. So basically, the way it works is it pushes in right through there, and it locks into place through this groove. Bam, just like that, okay? So that's what I'm doing right down here. I run my wire through, leave a little bit of slack, go through my little connector right here, Pull it through there. Now we have a conductive surface and we can take it that way. So this is my poly wire. I wanna show you that real quick before we start getting soaking wet. We're gonna get wet. So the poly wire, this one has a little hook inside right here. I'm gonna pull it tight, I'll hook it on. Pull it fairly snug. We'll give it a little bit of slack and then we'll tie this guy off the same exact way. So that is gonna hook right into place, right where we just hooked in our bungee. Now, if I have any slack in it, all I'll do is I'll come right out here, just like so. Pull it tight and take up all the slack. And that's it. So, that's what we got. Um, 
we have individual gates now. So this gate will serve for this one. So when I'm ready to move the cows, all I have to do is come right here. I grab this handle, I open it up, and the cows will come into this pasture right here. Then I'll close it back in behind them, just like so. Okay, then I'll open up this section to the waterer so they won't be able to get through here or any other areas and they'll have a nice big area to get around the waterer. All I'll do is disconnect this guy, take him right around the outside, bring him right back over and bam, hook it right there. Now that paddock will be open. Same thing, we can open each individual one. So folks, that's the rub. It's starting to rain, but this is gonna simplify my operating procedure when it comes to intensively grazing these animals. So around each one of my water tanks, and this is the one that I'm doing on a trial basis. I'm trying this out to see if this works. If I need three posts, four posts, five posts, six posts, I'm not sure. So that's why we're testing this out and we're teaching you guys so you can save money and I can save money too. So the next time the cows are down here, there are four paddocks in here. There'll probably be five. I'm gonna split this one in two and I'll easily be able to move my animals. Super cool, super easy way to solve a super ridiculous time-consuming problem here on the Stony Ridge. So guys, I wanna thank you so much for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I hope you learned a little bit. We got a lot of equipment out here. Everything's getting wet and I've got to get busy. I've got one more to put up and I'm totally done. This took about two hours and I'll have to do it. I have one, two, three, 14 waterers throughout the farm. That's a lot of work, a lot of work. So we're gonna see this ProTech post driver in a lot of future videos, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me on the Stony Ridge. I appreciate you. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Come on back to the farm. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. RT210, we'll go, get in here, we'll go ahead and get in here and we'll get in here and do 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 <laughs> Well, hey there, how you doing? <laughs> I had a little bit of cow poopy on you there, buddy. See y'all, hope you enjoyed the video.